This video is going to be one part vlog and one part fun fact because I am bad at being decisive. But what else is new? So two weeks ago, my geology class took a two-day field trip to John Day Fossil Beds National Monument in North Central Oregon. John Day is weird as far as national parks and monuments go because it's not just in one place. The monument actually consists of three different units which are all separated by at least an hour's worth of driving. Over the course of our trip, we visited all three units, starting with the most westerly unit, the Clarno unit. Clarno represents the oldest unit in the formation and is composed of volcanic mud flows dating to about 44 million years ago, about when the Cascade Mountain Range became a thing. If you're unaware of what a volcanic mud flow is, you've probably never seen footage of Mount St. Helens erupting, but essentially it's what happens when an erupting volcano falls over. These mud flows, called lahars, are great for fossil preservation because they can quickly cover entire swaths of forest. While the organic matter is quickly removed by the relentless appetite of time, leaves can leave imprints and larger pieces of organic matter, such as sticks, roots, and occasionally entire trees, can leave a permineralized structure where various minerals dissolved in water seep in and take the form of the object. The Clarno unit, in addition to being really pretty and the site where you can get the closest to the actual formations and fossils, is named after the Clarno nutbeds, so named for the thousands of nuts which have been found in the layer. And with that, we were off to the Painted Hills. This area is by far the prettiest of the units, especially at sunset, as it was when we got there. Now, if you're like myself and the other people on the trip, you'll notice that the hills look at first glance to be made out of sand. The colors seem to run down the sides, but if you look closely at it, you can see that the hill is actually made of much coarser material. This explains why walking on the hills leaves such long-lasting scars in the landscape, but what doesn't make sense is why hills made out of what is essentially weird gravel would be any good at preserving the fantastic vertebrate fossils for which John Day fossil beds is known. The answer, once again, has to do with the young cascades having a hissy fit and blowing ash everywhere. The Painted Hills represents a system of old floodplains and lakes which captured the dust and ash from mountains exploding to the west. The ash settled in fine layers at the bottom of the lakes, and as the layers piled up, they compressed and cemented together into rock. In this process, the ash is converted into bentonite clay, a material which is used as an emulsifier in things like toothpaste, chocolate, and kitty litter because it's absorbent and sticky. These two properties are why the hills look so weird. Underneath the gravelly layer, the hills look like normal layers of sedimentary rocks, but as the hill weathers, the bentonite absorbs water and clumps into little chunks of gravel which blanket the hills. This isn't true for all of the hills, however. Of particular note is Leaf Hill, which, in addition to not having a popcorn-esque gravel covering, is made almost entirely out of leaf fossils. This is really not an exaggeration. Every other rock that we picked up had some sort of leaf impression on it. We didn't see any of the really nice ones lying around, but it was actually impossible to not see some sort of fossil if you looked. Our last stop of the trip was the main unit, called the Sheep Rock Unit. We couldn't actually walk up to Sheep Rock, where a large number of vertebrate fossils had been found, and the hiking trail that we did take looked significantly cooler with depth perception. The main draw for this unit, instead, was the Visitor's Center. The Visitor's Center has a very nice museum exhibiting a lot of the more interesting things found in the park. In addition to having really cool examples of flowers and wood chunks and pine cones and even an egg, it exhibits that North America used to have significantly cooler animals than it does today, like rhinos and camels and weird elephant things. The best part is I don't even feel a nagging sense of guilt about these animals because they, unlike the mammoth and the giant ground sloth, died out millions of years before humans got to the Americas and ate everything larger than a moose. So that was basically my trip. I got to hold a fossilized turtle shell, which was cool, and then we drove four hours back to Walla Walla through some really pretty scenery, which, as usual, comes through very poorly in our YouTube video. Anyway, I hope you found all of this as interesting as I did. I'm going to leave a couple of links scattered around here to click on. Uh, there's probably going to be a subscribe button, too, because I haven't done that before. And, you know, subscribe buttons. It's what people do. Anyway, have a nice day. Do what I want.